there folks, welcome to the channel. Today's video is gonna seem a little out of order, but a lot of you have been asking for my feedback on the new Pro Series smokers from Smoke It It Smoker. We have the model 4D and recently we just ran about 100 pounds worth of sausage over a couple of days. And today we're gonna to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. A few weeks ago, we made a video talking about the details of the Pro Series Smoker. If you missed it, you can check it out right here once this video is done. So we're not gonna spend any time today really talking about the features and benefits of the Pro Series line. Today's video is exclusively dedicated to my perspective, my experience, my opinion about how I thought that it performed. Like I said earlier, we did about 100 pounds worth of sausage between Andouille, Texas Hot Links, and Polish sausage, and we ran different loads inside the smoker. Now, let me start off by saying that the size of the Pro Series smoker is the exact same size as the non-Pro Series smoker. So the inside dimensions uh, didn't change, whether you're using a 3.5, the 4, which is what I have, the 5, or the 6. The 6 is actually new. Uh, so, you know, the space inside the smoker was the same. Before we got the Pro Series, we could comfortably put about 40 pounds of sausage. Smoking it has these sausage racks that look like this, and we would usually put about 10 pounds per rack uh, and four racks would fit on the row. So we would get about 40 pounds, cook it, not a problem. A cook like that in the old smoker would generally take me, you know, kind of doing a low and slow sort of cook anywhere between seven to eight hours, you know, depending on the humidity level uh, of the smoker. Now I can say that when we put 40 pounds in our non-pro series smoker, about midway through the cook, a lot of humidity would build up the sausages would start to sweat and I would have to open the door and allow them to dry out again and then continue smoking them. All right, so there was kind of a couple little tricky things you had to do if you overloaded your smoker. Uh, it did not do that when I had 20 pounds or 30 pounds. And so I'm just kind of giving you a little backstory about what it was like to cook sausages in the old smoker. All right, so now moving forward, we have the Pro Series and I thought, you know what, this is a great a great time to figure out what the capability of this unit is. The first cook that we did in it, load number one, was a combination of Polish and Andouille sausage. We put 25 pounds of both in there, and so basically we loaded each rack with about 12 and a half pounds, and we got 50 pounds worth of sausage in that smoker. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, a little Polish sausage. If you want the recipe link for any of the sausages that we made in this video, check the description box below. The hot links are out of control. All right, so there's rag number one. And this is really packed, by the way. That's about 25 pounds of kielbasa. This is Cajun andouille sausage. We're about to make a chicken sausage etouffee, some gumbo, and red beans and rice. All of that needs that good andouille sausage. And there it is, 50 pounds of sausage. This is the most amount of sausage we've ever put in this smoker, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. We set our program on the Smoker app to follow our usual low and slow type of cook. Two hours at 100 degrees, an hour and a half at 125, another two hours at 150, another two hours at, at you know 175, and then we finish up the cook at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I knew going into this that convection cooking is very different than non-convection cooking. So I closely monitor the temp of my sausages the entire time. So that is important to know. And I will say this, if you don't know how to cook with a convection smoker and you kind of follow the same rules as a non-convection smoker, you will absolutely burn your food. I'm just gonna tell you right now. Okay, so with that being said, the first step in our program was set to 100 Fahrenheit for two hours. And this is exclusively to dry the sausage out. Not so that the smoke adheres better, more specifically so that the casing can firm up and the meat and the casing can form a glue-like bond. I find that you end up getting a better snap if you begin the cooking and smoking process once your casing is dried out. So that's what that step is. We cranked the fan on high and we did not close the door. We just left the door open probably about six inches. And as you would expect, the sausages dried a whole lot faster than before. I mean, you have that combination of, you know, 100 degree heat that's rising, the fan that's circulating that air and it's pushing it out the door, a lot of moisture escaping. And so I was very pleased with that. The next step for me bumped up to 125. Now, normally when I smoke sausages, that's when I start applying smoke. So I'll close the door, I'll fire up the cold smoke generator and away we go. And this is kind of where I ran into an issue uh, with the cold smoke generator. Let me show you what that looks like. 
All right, there it is. That's the Bellas Cold Smoke Generator from Smoking It. We're going to go ahead and plug in the tube. We're smoking with Pecan and Hickory today, and one of the neat features uh, for the Pro Series is a plug behind the controller. So we're just going to plug that cold smoke generator right back there, and I can feel that the unit is on, and it's up and running. All right, so now I'm not a huge fan of uh, the placement of the cold smoker, but that's just a personal quirk. I'll probably end up moving it to the opposite side, closer to the door. Let's get a probe in there, and I want you to pay attention to the smoke coming from the top. So you can definitely see that there's a strong push-pull with this convection system. I mean, this is not a gentle breeze. This is definitely blowing some air. So let me shut this down, and you can immediately see what I'm talking about. But look on the left-hand side of the smoker. Do you see what's going on over there? Can anybody guess what that is? <laughs> so what's happening is inside the smoker, that convection system is causing a back pressure onto this outside smoker. And it's pushing smoke through this outside unit, which is inevitably going to burn through that wood super fast. All right, so that's definitely something that Smoke It is going to have to address, possibly redesign. Now, the cold smoker still works. It's just that when that fan is on, that back pressure is created, and it's just causing smoke to billow out all over the place. And it's not as efficient uh, as it used to be. And being that that was the first time that's happened, I honestly could say I don't know what the fix is. Maybe a redesign of the outlet tube, restricting you know where the smoke comes out, or even a stronger air pump. Either way, I know smoking it is aware of the issue and they're already on top of it. So that means that I could not use my cold smoke generator for my smoke and I had to use the wood box for the purpose that it was actually intended. Quick question, give me an answer in the comment section below. How many of you use the wood box when you smoke and how many of you use a cold smoke generator? I just super curious. All right, so we put wood in the wood box and then we continued to cook. 150 went to 175 automatically, 175 went to 200. All right, so for round number one with 50 pounds worth of sausage in the convection smoker, how did it cook? Well, first of all, 50 pounds is overloading that smoker. We typically do 40 pounds and I always feel that 40 pounds may be a touch too much because they tend to sweat midway through the cook. A lot of humidity gets built up and you have to sort of do unique things to your smoker in order for them to dry out and for your sausages to turn out well. That particular smoker can comfortably hold anywhere between 30 to 35 pounds. So 50 pounds in it was a complete stretch. And also remember, we did leave two rack rows of space so that the airflow was not hitting the sausages directly, which means we were closer to the heat source than we've ever been. So in my mind, I thought maybe the top and the bottom might be done first and the center might lag a little bit. But after about eight hours of a low and slow type of cook, so it didn't really finish any faster or any slower than a regular cook, but we did have 10 extra pounds in there. And I did notice that the rack, so we had four racks in there, the rack closest to the door was done first. Uh, I took that rack out, put it in the water, and then about 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, uh, rack two, three, and four uh, came to temperature. All right, after it was all said and done, I gotta say the 50 pounds cooked beautifully, albeit at different times. That was the only thing that I didn't like about it. Row number one came out first, uh, row number two, second, and then row three and four kind of were done around the same time. From top to bottom of the sausage, the internal temperature was brought to 145, and it was really only about a two degree variant, anywhere from 145 to 147 and I was super excited to see that the temperature at the very bottom closest to the heat source was very similar to the temperature in the middle. So that was encouraging. I did notice, which put a big old smile on my face, that there was no humidity buildup in the smoker, even with 50 pounds of sausage. And that hot air blowing over all of those sausages really helped to dry them out, shooting that moisture out of the top. One of the benefits of that was that it left the casing super tender and super snappy, which I really liked. Normally, without the convection system, I'm having to do things during the cook in order to make that happen. But in this particular case, I didn't have to do anything. There was no moisture buildup and the casing was super, super snappy. And so that was basically cook number one, 50 pounds worth of sausage. For round number two, we did 30 pounds of Texas hot links. I wanted to reduce the amount of sausage that we put in there to see if it cooked faster, better, all of that great stuff. I did follow the exact same cooking schedule. So 100, 125, 150, 175, and then we finish at 200. Put some wood in the wood box and let it do its thing. Here's what I found out. At the first step, 100 Fahrenheit with just the fan on and the door opened, the sausages dried faster than the sausages before. Probably because there was more airflow inside that smoker. There was more space between the sausage. The next two steps were basically the same. You know, we're smoking with the wood box, 125 to 150. Now here's where it gets wild because those of you who either already have 
a convection smoker from smoking it or you're interested in getting one, this is where you got to really pay attention. The final step in our program was set to go to 200 Fahrenheit when the sausage temperature reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we normally set our program to and under normal circumstances, sans convection, our sausages come out amazing. But with convection, because our sausages are now cooking so much faster, uh, if I were to adhere to that program, I would have honestly burned up all my sausages. Because as soon as the program switched from 150 to 175, within 30 minutes of being at 175, we had hit our target temperature. And all four rows of the sausages were cooked at the exact same time. And I'm talking top, middle, bottom. It was absolutely beautiful. Here's the links coming out of the smoker. Look at the color, amazing flavor, super juicy, super snappy, very nice and smoky. And in my opinion, it was a perfect cook. They weren't cooked any better than batch number one, but we didn't have to do anything in order for them to get cooked. Like they were all cooked evenly at the exact same time. They all came out at the exact same time. And that to me is a perfect cook. Where batch number one, uh, you know, you had to sort of take them out in stages as they were being done. And that primarily has everything to do with the airflow inside of the smoker. Now here's the kicker. Batch number one took about eight hours. That was 50 pounds worth of sausage. And you had to sort of manipulate how you took them out. Batch number two, Sausage was spread out a little bit better. Same amount of rows. We shaved three and a half hours off of our cook. I think it was the first time I've ever smoked a sausage low and slow where I started in the morning and finished before the sun went down. It was absolutely beautiful. Batch number three was about 25 pounds of Andouille sausage. That's what I had left. And uh, really, I didn't notice a huge difference between batch number two and batch number three. We finished in roughly the same amount of time. Beautiful smoky flavor. Everything was absolutely amazing. What really really stood out in all batches though was the tenderness of that casing. I mean there was no moisture buildup whatsoever at any point during the cook and a lot of that was being vented out because of the convection system. So overall here are my thoughts on the convection smoker from Smokin' It. I love it. I gotta be honest I think the convection system is an incredible upgrade from the previous version. No heat zones. The sausage cooked evenly from top, middle, and bottom, even though we were closer to the heating source, which is incredible. I actually thought that the end product was better coming out of the convection system than the previous smoker. Now, not to say the previous smoker delivered awesome products, but this not only delivers an extraordinary product with a lot less work, in a shorter amount of time if you don't overload it. And I do believe that that's the key. If you put too much product in there, it is going to mess with the way that the air flows and it could possibly present an issue. And so the idea is to just kind of not overload the smoker, let the convection system do its thing. And the first time you cook in it, or the first couple times you're cooking it, you're gonna wanna check the temperature, especially when you get, you know, kind of close to that 75% done, because I'm finding that we're saving 25, 30% on the cook time alone, which in my opinion is absolutely huge. But if you're not aware of that, you can easily overcook your sausage. So I do think a video uh, is prudent on things that you need to be aware of and how to use a convection smoker so that you can kind of get the ins and out of it. But if you already have one, you're definitely gonna wanna start monitoring the temperature temperature sooner rather than later until you get a feel for how your unit cooks just so that you don't overcook your sausage. With all of that being said, outside of the convection smoker as a standalone unit, if you do, like myself, happen to add a cold smoke generator, that right there is problematic for the time being. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the cold smoke generator just, I mean, it works. It's just not very efficient because of that back pressure that's being built out. And so, yeah, that definitely needs to be addressed, but I think that that's being looked at as we speak. Speak. Honestly, I don't have a lot of negative things to say about this convection smoker. I mean, think about it. It works exactly like the old unit. It's just more efficient. With the airflow circulating inside, you lose the heat zones. Your food cooks a lot faster as long as you don't overload it. And in my opinion, those are two huge wins. I mean, I did have to get used to using the wood box because I honestly do not use the wood box. I haven't used the wood box in years, but really that's not a problem. All right, folks, and there you have it. That's what my first cook looked like. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions that perhaps I didn't cover in this video, leave them in the comment section below. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell because you're not gonna wanna miss our brisket cook in this convection smoker. And of course, the video on what you need to do before you even think about putting a piece of meat in your new smoker. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.